Good morning, everybody. Welcome. My name is Richard. It's Friday the 26th of August today, and uh, this morning we had the announcement of the new electricity price uh, increase cap. So obviously we've seen electric prices rising continuously over the course of the year. So in this video here, I want to have a sort of frank and transparent discussion about what that means for EV drivers and the cost of running an electric car now. And I've done some calculations so we can do some comparisons between petrol and diesel cars as well. So, I mean, there's other benefits to an electric car, but I'll cover some of those at the end. Uh, I still think they're better cars. I'll still drive one even if it costs more to run. But we still have an increase to the cost of running an electric car. Now electric prices have gone up. So let's look at some pricing and comparisons. I'm going to break this down into basically a running cost per mile. I think that's the simplest way because then you can sort of say, well, I do 10,000 miles a year and you can kind of do some calculations off of these numbers quite easily. And I'll show a table on the screen a few times so you can have a look and do some comparisons for yourself. So the announcement this morning is that from the 1st of October to uh, the end of December 2022 this year, uh, the cap for domestic electricity is going to be raised from 28 pence per kilowatt hour up to 52 pence per kilowatt hour. A lot of news headlines will say price cap at 3,700 a year for the domestic houses. There's not a cap on the total you're going to spend in a year. When they do those numbers, that is based on the average energy household uh, usage. You will still be charged for every single kilowatt hour you use, but that can be no more than 52 pence per kilowatt hour now. So quite an increase in 28 to 52. Overall this, I should highlight, you may well still have some cheaper overnight tar charging tariffs, you may well have solar, you may well have some fixed deal that you're still in, but what I'm looking at here is if you're just on a flexible tariff and your electricity will be changing up to 52 pence per kilowatt hour from October. So I've compiled a, a list of average um, miles per kilowatt hour on cars. Cars are quite, e electric cars are quite easy to work out because typically you, you can know, and if you've got an electric car, you'll know how many miles per kilowatt hour you do. So, uh, but broadly speaking, the least efficient EVs uh, tend to do about two and a half miles per kilowatt hour, even driven spiritedly, you know, a Taycan in cold weather driven hard. Up to about five miles per kilowatt hour would be some of the more efficient EVs. So some of the latest sort of Tesla Model 3 standard ranges and uh, the original Hyundai Ioniq 5 still very efficient. We've tested quite a lot of different EVs. So we know, uh, you know, various cars and roughly what they'll get. And if you've got an EV, you'll know roughly what you tend to average in terms of your miles per kilowatt hour. So let's take a kind of medium level uh, efficiency electric vehicle. And that would do three and a half, four miles per kilowatt hour. So with the uh, rate changes, let's just say your car does three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. That's, and I'm talking real world numbers as well, not sort of manufacturers advertised pricing, but let's say you know your car does three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So I'm talking things like, for my testing, things like VW ID4s and such like. That would have cost about eight pence per mile before, but from October, that's gonna be 15 pence per mile. Slightly more efficient cars, so Tesla Model 3s, Model Ys, seven pence per mile, going up to 13 pence per mile. So some quite significant <coughs> increases in your running cost. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if we then have, um, I've then taken the average price for petrol and diesel in the UK, according to databases, as I look it up this morning, we're paying on average £1.71 for unleaded here in the UK and £1.82, 83 pence per litre for diesel. Seems to be more expensive around here, but this is the current UK average apparently. Uh, by the way, if you're in the US, uh, US gallons are different, but I did do a quick calculation and based on today's exchange rate, uh, unleaded would, is about $7.63 uh, per US gallon. So if you are watching this from the US, though, the price in here will be very different, but that's roughly what we pay. So let's take petrol diesel cars. Uh, I think we'll agree that a current modern petrol diesel car does usually 45, 50 miles per gallon as an average, 40 perhaps. Obviously, if you drive things like BMW M3s and performance cars, you're much near the mid-20s, of course. Um, so if you take a BMW M3 and a Tesla Model 3 performance, we're still going to see some quite different running costs there. But let's take something like a, um, a Volkswagen Golf or something. You do 45 miles per gallon, roughly. I know there'll be comments below. I get 70 miles per gallon out of my whatever, whatever. I'm sure there's going to be exceptions to all these cases. These are very broad numbers. But let's take a 45 miles per gallon car, pretty efficient, average miles per gallon car. 
you're looking at about 17 or 18 pence per mile of running cost, in other words, petrol or diesel. Uh, so you compare that to kind of the average electric car, which would be 13, 15 pence per mile. We're still looking a little bit cheaper at the moment for an electric car, but obviously the gap has really closed up there. It really has. If you go to the um, a kind of more extremes uh, of running costs, and again, you can see in this table here that an efficient EV might cost 10 pence per mile now, whereas a really efficient combustion car might cost 14, uh, 13 pence per mile. It's, again, it's the same thing. There's still a little bit of saving to EVs. EVs will generally still be cheaper to run uh, per mile, but that gap has really closed right up. So as we stand from October, there's still the advantage to EVs of, of that. Now, these are domestic energy rates, assuming you pay the maximum capped uh, tariff. Like I say, there are uh, easily some advantages uh, if you have, for example, solar. Now, solar is going to be a big thing in local energy generation, maybe battery storage. And we've got a big project about to be installed here in the coming weeks, so stay subscribed for more information on that one. Uh, but it takes ages to get solar now as well. You can book it literally years, months in advance. So... Um, and then one thing I, I had not done too much on here, it doesn't really tend to get covered too much by press and media, and I'm surprised, uh, is the cost of commercial electricity. So the amount of electricity we pay here has gone up massively this year. And so if you run a factory and all that kind of stuff, it's really gone up. Just to give you an example, from here, uh, earlier this year, we were paying 16 pence per kilowatt hour for commercial electricity. That's gone up to over 80 pence per kilowatt hour, or will be from the 1st of October. There is no cap on commercial rates at the moment, so there's huge increases there. And uh, in fact, you know, for us now, we're going to go and charge cars at home now. What I think the trend will be, and the reason I mentioned commercial, really is ultimately, I think, then what's going to be the consequences? These are all based on charging from home, but what if you use the rapid chargers out on the motorway services, for example? We, again, we've seen those increasing quite drastically this year. I wouldn't be surprised if we see rapid chargers at the, the motorway services such like going up to 80 or 90 pence per kilowatt hour as well, because we pay that kind of sum here in the coming couple of weeks. So if you do that, uh, you've got some you know, increased costs there as well, of course. So uh, let's take an average, let's say four miles per kilowatt hour, fairly efficient EV. That's going to end up costing you about 23 pence per mile. And that is like running a kind of 35 miles per gallon type car. Um, so that could be significant. Of course, most EV drivers normally charge at home, but when you're doing the longer trips and if you're out, there are a lot of people that use rapid chargers every day. And if those prices go up to such a value as well, then we're certainly looking at much more kind of price parity between running costs. Again, I will counteract that with the fact that if you stop and get petrol or diesel at motorway services, they're normally quite a bit more expensive as well. There's so many variables in these calculations. You'll know that your local uh, uh, Tesco is cheaper than uh, Moto Services on M1 or something. Nothing against either of those brands. I'm just picking out numbers. So uh, in essence, uh, I think we're reaching a closer price parity, but there are still at the moment some savings to be had with run electric car. There are, of course, other savings, massive savings. So for example, there's no annual road tax. Maintenance is far less, far less running an electric car. Yes, you've got tires, which last about the same as another normal car as well. Um, but you don't have the maintenance. There aren't, there's an oil and clutches and exhausts and gearboxes and DPF filters and all that kind of stuff that you need to maintain on uh, ICE cars. Um, you've also got, uh, if you run a car as a company car, there's still huge savings there. The amount you pay for benefit and kind tax is still vastly different. It costs almost nothing to have an electric car as your company car. The amount of tax you pay for that as a benefit in kind is far less than if you run uh, something like a BMW 320 diesel or something, you know, a combustion vehicle. And so if you go to premium levels like Range Rovers and such like, it's hugely different. Um, and overall this as well, I will again say that uh, I just think electric cars are just nicer to drive. They are nice to drive. I'm a petrol head, I like my cars, but broadly speaking, day to day, uh, electric car is just better, preferable. Most people that drive an electric car for the first time are absolutely astounded. They're just great, smooth, simple, brilliant. And the fact that you can charge from home or refuel from home is so much easier than to stop at petrol stations and such like. So I think they're still better. Yes, if my commute was five o'clock in the morning across the A roads of Wales, I'd probably enjoy the V8 car. Uh, yes, but that's not really real life, is it? For most of us, it's sitting in traffic jams in town, up and down the motorway. 
Um, and of course, you've still got the ultimate goal, you know, which is to reduce emissions. You st we still need to reduce emissions. We have just gone through the whole Northern Hemisphere is in a massive drought right now. And that is directly a result of climate change. So we do still have to make the transition to electric cars. So, you know, uh, uh, with these price increases, and one of the reasons for making this video is I can just see, you know, the haters coming in and saying, well, electric cars now cost more to run than petrol, diesel. Well, hopefully this shows they don't. There's still some savings to be had, but they're still better. It's still where we need to go uh, in the future. We need to have a more sustainable transport. Of course, as part of all that is the whole picture. Ideally, we have our own solar generation at home. We store excess energy in home battery storage, and then that will run our vehicles. That is the goal, and that would still be the best solution for everybody. There'll be headlines in the news about we need to fire up coal power stations to generate the electricity we now need. Um, I really hope that doesn't happen. But even if it does, it's still far greener to take coal powered station energy than it is to burn your own fossil fuels in your own vehicle. The efficiency is still way, way better. So again, I can see some of those arguments coming forward towards me there. The fact we have zero tailpipe emissions in town is still a massive advantage for air quality. So again, even if we get to the point where running per mile for electricity becomes more expensive than petrol diesel, maybe it will one day. Uh, it's still the thing we need to do. We still need to adopt electric cars. So don't let some of the headlines distract you from all of this. So uh, there we are. That's my kind of current rant and uh, news headlines on this today. Uh, it is a shame to see the electricity prices going up, but we know really the sources of all that. Let's not get into that discussion. Uh, but still many advantages to be had, and you should still buy an electric car. It's still the cleaner way to get around. Well, the cleanest way is to not have a car at all, cycle to work, of course. I think overall, you know, with this, we're going to see a lot of people really cutting back and saving electricity. So the amount of electricity we consume, we'll all have to save. I certainly will be trying to make sure we keep the thermostat down a bit more at home and uh, save on the number of lights that are on, all that kind of stuff. We all need to do that. And ultimately, if we can reduce consumption and usage, then that will be better for the environment as well. So that's it for now. I hope that's been useful to you. If you were concerned about running costs and such like, uh, there'll be various headlines across the media over the coming days and weeks and months, I'm sure. Uh, but in terms of EV running costs versus petrol diesel, I hope it's been useful. So that's it for me for now. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.